Hey folks, it's Brian. This week's episode, you do not want to miss the video version of this week's episode. Our guest this week is Dear Let's Play What You Fear, the horror streamer drag queen, and she is she was nice enough to to put on her her full kit for us, and she looks amazing. Please do not miss this. Go over to patreon.com slash late night, check us out, and uh, support the show over there. Enjoy this great episode. Dear, dear, talk talk to me about your look today, because this oh. is incredible. Oh, do you Everything. like this? Mm. Yes. It's amazing. Mm. Yes. Well, <laughs> I woke up at 8 a.m. And I was like, let's start the day. I'm I'm more of a uh, 12 p.m. gal or later um, mm -hmm. in my normal day-to-day -day life. But, you know, when someone nice and someone pretty asks you to show up early, then mm -hmm. I'll be nice and I'll be pretty. Great. Wow. Um, <laughs> my favorite colors are black and silver. So I'm wearing black and I'm wearing silver. I just wanted mm -hmm. it to be like sort of quintessential deer. I'm always yep. blonde. I'm the blonde bombshell. And mm -hmm. I like very, very intricate makeup. But every once in a while, I just want to like have like softness. And so I went with like a soft kind of smoky mm -hmm. eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's really nice. I always feel very, very cute and very fresh in a nude lip. So we're wearing nude. Mm -hmm. And I put on an earring. I got to tell you. Oh, let's see him. Let's whenever see him. whenever I am going, I, I just came back from L.A. actually. I went to a nice little unveiling um, oh, preview party for the game Redfall by uh -huh. Bethesda. Ooh. And that was so, so, so cool. And when I go to somewhere IRL, I like mm -hmm. to do like, I like to go there. I like to be completely dragged out everything. Right. Sometimes when I'm on stream, I won't wear an earring. Mm-hmm. But today I wore an earring for you. They're oh, little devils. You. They're little oh, devils. Yes, there they How are. Perfect. I got them on Etsy. <laughs> Etsy is the best place for like cute gothy earrings and stuff. It's the spot. Absolutely. And there's so much like creativity and people do laser cut designs and oh, yeah. like 3D printing. It's just so so cool and creative there's so many different things now is is your is your top is that like reflective is that iridescent i can't quite oh it, tell. it is oh, it yes is. it's there, an iridescent okay, and it's like a body con so it's like mm -hmm. nice. it could be tighter probably but it's pretty tight <laughs> mm -hmm. um and it's like a mini dress great. i love it it's very disco ball right yes, yeah like i love silver because i feel like it's a neutral but it also is shiny so it catches your eye but it doesn't feel like colorful i like black and white a lot so silver mm -hmm. is yeah. like a cool color for me. Are, are, are the... you? No, please, Layton. <laughs> Y'all are, are foaming you... at the mouth to talk to me. Ooh. Hell yeah, we are. Next question. Uh, are you wearing circle lenses? Yes. Do you like Ooh. that? Also, oh, yes, look, this is the DSLR. I'm, I'm sure that y'all <gasps> do this all the time. Oh, sweet. Get yeah. Oh, yes. It. Let's Get do the close up. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I, I use oh, now circle I can really lenses see like earrings, that yeah. in college all the time. And my eyes just like can't take it anymore. So very much respect the, oh. the like black rimmed ones look so good i like so me as a person i went to school for illustration mm -hmm. but my mm. aesthetic as a queen and as a creative i love cartoons and mm -hmm. i love um fashion illustrations and so i wear the circle lenses because not only does it enlarge the eyes and it looks just so cool it looks amazing but yeah also i feel like a cartoon character because you know if you watch the simpsons they just have black dots for eyes nobody has an eye color yeah. mm -hmm. and so i feel like it just um it resonates with me to have just a darked out eye and have Ooh. everything else like really dramatic also when I did my zoom in, I noticed I have a gap. So let me just um, okay, great. really quick, really quick. Just um, this is our first ever on podcast gap fix. This is now a makeup tutorial. Have you ever had a makeup <laughs> tutorial on here before? You know what? We haven't. Although Layton has been promising to do my makeup for two and a half years. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Get into it. Let's go. I, we just, well, you know, it was it was COVID when we kind of started this thing and we weren't in person and then we keep forgetting mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. But I think we, yeah. need, we need to do it soon. I think you should. Makeup is just so, so cool. Would it be just like a quick little beauty moment or would it be like a drag? Well, I, 
the, here's the question. I, I, I think in the ideal version of this, I don't know what the fuck is happening to me. And mm-hmm. I let... You're just like, do something I'm just to me. In it. Let's see I'm what just, happens. I'm just like, think of a look for me, execute it. Like, yeah. and then we'll, and then I'm cool with whatever. So we just see what happens. And then there's like a big reveal moment at the end when I get Absolutely. to see what has happened. I, I kind of, I, I want to, would you let me glue stick your brows, Brian? <laughs> well, you allow you, you, that? Can, can I be fully honest? You can yeah. borrow mine. <laughs> so <laughs> what, what, what does that mean? You take a glue stick and you run it along the brows and that, and then you put stuff on over them or what? What, what does that mean? I, I am not a makeup expert in case everything about me doesn't just scream that. <laughs> Dear, you know better than I do. I, Man, I have you, never, you brought it up. You teach me. I've, I've never glued my brows before or glued anybody's brows. I just know that that's the trick. You just know that's the way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so cool. t- teach us about so, this. So, um, so this is a washable school glue, Elmer's glue stick, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And it's purple. And so the, the, trade secret of drag is you want to reshape the bone structure right mm-hmm. so you take a glue stick because you put it onto paper or whatever it becomes plastic essentially when it dries so you run it across the eyebrows many times it sounds very simple but it's it's quite intrusive it's there's quite a whole a lot. yeah but a whole essentially put it into the brow comb it through and then you build makeup on top of it because it creates a flat surface because mm-hmm. of um the hairs it's like very uh 3D, it, it creates a crunchy kind of effect if you try to put makeup on top of it. So you're trying mm-hmm. to blank it out, start a new canvas, and build the makeup from there. Mm-hmm. And the purple, the purple is what you have to do because this dries clear. So you put it into the eyebrow, oh, you wait okay. a few moments, eventually it will be clear. That's when you put the makeup on because if it's still purple, it means it's still wet. Gotcha. So, yes, I would happily let you do that to me. Wow, am I the, am I'm I the first drag queen that's been on here? You are. Yes, you are. So sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. You're, you're <laughs> no. going to do, do drag now, but I was, I was like, I just had to know. Yes, yeah, no, you are. We, we've had yeah. a couple of, we had our first ASMR person on last week, and you're our first drag queen. Slay. So welcome. <laughs> yes, we, we did reach out to one other, and I don't want to name drop anybody, but I did reach out to Online Kine, who's a math queen. She's uh, fierce. She's amazing. So fierce. Uh, math and, queen? Yes. She is a, a TikTok math queen. And, mm-hmm. you know, we'll talk about some pretty technical stuff. Uh, That's awesome. Do you know her personally? I don't know her personally, but she's been on um, Canada's Drag Race. And she is literally an icon to the DIY drag scene, especially oh, like okay. online. Because she has, her name is Online Kind. Because she's yeah. been making drag tutorials for probably... I feel like 10 years now or nearly 10 years at least. And she is very young. She's like in her early twenties, at least a few years ago when she was on Canada's drag race. And and she was one of the youngest ones there, but she's been doing drag for so long and teaching everyone about drag. Like she's one of those people where she shares all of her knowledge. Like you could ask, I I imagine you could ask her anything and she's like, yeah, girl, this is what I use. This is what I do. That's so great. She makes, hundreds of tutorials on wigs and makeup and um crafting clothing and she's just see i didn't even know that icon, so i just talented. knew her her math stuff on tiktok yeah. i mean so, she does that too. You only know the and math she looks well well of, co- of course but like i was like oh she looks incredible she's talking at a mm-hmm. pretty high level about this stuff this seems like an amazing person for the show so if anyone out there knows kind online kind personally please put us in touch i reached out to reps she probably never even got the message so but no you, you are the first uh drag queen that said yes to us so we really appreciate <laughs> the it. first one that answered <laughs> yes that's it <laughs> uh, yeah i'm i am so glad that the inexplicable mcdonald's thing that we did together mm-hmm. uh that was fun so thank you to mcdonald's for <laughs> taking the connection now now by inexplicable does inexplicable mean what the fuck, or does it mean you literally can't explain it because of an NDA or something? Can, oh. can, can you tell us what it is? Is what is the really the question? To, to me, that. to me, it's sort of like you know, it's how, how did all of these pieces come together? Like, you know, Dream Daddy and a drag queen and McDonald's and me yeah. and Leighton like it's just all these yeah. pieces fit together and it's so strange but I, I thought it was really magical so 
And yeah. so some uh, some third party, McDonald's, question mark, put the two of you in touch to mm -hmm. do that thing or you both showed up at the event virtually or whatever. It was like a, ch a charity stream thing that linked up like here's a streamer and then here's a game dev and the mm -hmm. streamer will interview the game dev and then play the game. Mm -hmm. And I got matched with Deer, which is like perfect oh, fit. Oh, great. Cool. As a fellow horror and horror game lover. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Thanks, Mick. Donald. Yay! <laughs> and also, it was a um, it was a specifically queer driven charity fundraiser. So oh, it wasn't it it was it was even more niche, which made it more special. It wasn't just like here is a random creator, here is a random game. It's like yeah. here is a game about queer inclusion, and here is a queer streamer, and here is a queer developer making the queer game. And like it was just like cool because I don't usually assume that McDonald's is or is not <laughs> right. inclusive. You know Who the fuck I mean? knows? It's like, some mega like, corporation. Who I would like knows, to right? believe it. Sure. Yeah. And they proved that my hopes are sometimes correct with yeah. an inclusive charity drive. But, you know, you yeah. can never assume too much of, like you said, a corporation. Right. Until I, they I prove fully right. assumed, I assumed it was a scam email because I get so <laughs> many of them. So, <laughs> Donald streamed okay sure yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was cool it was really cool yeah, it, it was, was really a dream fun. wow I love it um Brian should we introduce the show I'm gonna say yes so everybody this is late night with Brian Wecht my name is Brian Wecht across from me today we have Leighton Gray hi I'm Leighton Gray that was Brian Wecht mystery guest would you care to introduce yourself Hello. Ooh, I'm a mystery in more ways than one. <laughs> My name is Dear Let's Play What You Fear. I like to play scary games up in here. Perfect. And I, I'm a drag queen who streams horror-focused video games on Twitch and TikTok. Uh, I'm an influencer and a creative, and I'm a model, and I'm an actress. Ish. That's great. Perfect. Perfect. Ish. Now, I I'm very curious. Are there other queens who stream horror games specifically? Are there? Is there? Is that um, a small but extant community, or are you the only person in that particular, the center of that Venn diagram? I would say if one person is doing something, there are oodles more. It's just you don't know. So, Usually. like, I would yeah. never claim to be like the only, only X Y Z. Yeah, but I am very passionate about what I do because I do my favorite things. I do drag and I play horror video games. So like I am cuckoo mm -hmm. for those things. And to me, those are my worlds. So I am super duper excited. And I didn't know that other people would ever do that. Like it feels so niche yeah. to me, but um, at least when I started, but there are tons of drag queens, drag kings, drag things that play every video game sure. out there like you name it and yeah. someone's playing it and someone's doing it in drag nowadays which is the coolest thing because my um like i said drag is my passion so i love being able to do it myself and also watch other people do my nerdy culture interests mm -hmm. um yeah. and mixing them around and making this like cool cool kind of pastime that we can all enjoy um I know tons of friends of mine that love horror and play horror video games, but um, I don't know. I, 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 um, I started Stream Queens. It's an all we say the all drag, the all drag digital troupe of content creators on Twitch, and so um, we have over a hundred members, and it's not just horror. That's it's amazing. all types of whatever your interest is. If it's RPGs, if it's fighting games, if it's whatever it is someone's doing it mm -hmm. but um i don't consider myself the only one but if i was the only one i probably wouldn't say i'm the only one because i don't i don't <laughs> like to say like i don't like like i'm the number one boo 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 <laughs> boo boo like i'm i'm just here and i'm doing my thing what i was more asking was are there you know is, is there like a, a known community of specifically drag horror game streamers or that's that, that is very niche you know, I was I so for all, right. So I was asking, how big is that community to your knowledge? I would say that if you're a streamer on Twitch or on TikTok or on YouTube or if, if you're or on Facebook, whatever, if you're streaming video games, if you like horror, you stream it mm -hmm. easy. 
if you don't like horror, then your charity incentive, your right. subathon goal, your whatever whatever it is you're trying to do and you're trying to amplify it and get attention, get people talking, getting get people engaged, um, you're going to play a horror game because if you hate it, then it's even more entertaining to watch. It's it's like mm-hmm. super entertaining yeah. to watch someone that's loving what they're doing, sure. but it's even more entertaining if they <laughs> hate what they're doing. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So, yes, absolutely. I think everybody is a horror-focused um, streamer yeah. Now and again. Just, that's a good point. Yeah. But there but to answer your question very directly, there is not like a dedicated here is the drag ball of horror Twitch. It's like here's the drag ball of Twitch and then everybody is doing their own thing whether it's horror or not and I just right. live. I live for it. Perfect. I love it. Late. Speaking of uh love and hate with horror video games, <laughs> I know you play a lot of Dead by Daylight. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Uh what are, who are, who are your mains? Um, and how do you feel that that's a two part question. Who are your mains? What, what, how long have you been playing dead by daylight? I just, I want to hear about it. Oh yeah. I love dead by daylight. So much fun. Um, it's like the smash bros of horror, you know, so mm. good. So true. I, uh, the slash bros. Yeah. Oh, oh, I've never heard that one before. Come on, Brian. Super Thank slash you. bros. That Super slash bros. So right? good. Thank that you. is Re- rebrand behavior. I'm yeah. gonna need to like keep that in the back of my mind <laughs> when I'm like, let me make this extra cute, and I drop that one. Um, okay, so my mains. We'll we'll start with Survivor. I like Naya. Because, okay, so the only queer inclusion character outright is David. Okay, Dead yes. by Daylight's like that's a. That's a gay guy. You know, I like him. He's cool. But to me, Naya seems like she's a lesbian. She I, likes I, cats. She dresses very, like, mask. But she has, like, some colorful things. But she's never girly. She's always, like, more hard and more edgy. And so, like, yeah. I queer identify with her, even though I'm not a lesbian. Like, I'm like, that's my people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Especially because whenever she has, like, some sort of motif, it's usually a cat. So I love her. And then I also love Resident Evil 5. So they released a legendary cosmetic for Jill, where it turns her into Sheva with her own voice lines, her own sound oh effects, God. all oh, wow. this cool. stuff. So I alternate between Naya and I alternate with Sheva because I just love Sheva and Naya seems like a lesbian to me. I have, um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fog whisperer with dead by daylight. So, um, that's wow. their partner influencer program. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they treat us to the different cosmetics, the different characters in the game. Um, so I don't have to choose, but I choose them. Like those are, those are my gals. I'll play right. as other people too, but those are the ones I like. And then in as- my mind, even if they're not directly confirmed, everybody, if if you're stuck in the fog, you are queer. Yeah. That's that's just, <laughs> mm-hmm. look at this whole mm-hmm. situation. They're all kissing each other. Layton, remind me, remind me who your mains are. Yeah, tell uh, us. As Survivor, I, Cheryl, um, and also Michaela, just because, like, she isn't even my favorite. Uh, she works at a but... coffee shop. She has kissed a lady before. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. yeah. She's a witchy. Yeah. But uh, I just like, I think I bought her when one of the events was happening. And so I just have every perk on her. And it's like, oh, I don't want to put in the work to grind on <laughs> mm-hmm. other people. But I'm usually like the orange shirt, gray hair, Cheryl. Um, oh, yes. I love, yeah. I love that gray hair. I don't. It's so cute. Can she dress as that in Silent Hill 3? Like, I don't directly recognize that costume but i like that one so there's that colorway of that costume but then there's the blonde hair with the pink shirt and i think that's in the game Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i'm not sure but it's it's a real like mid-2000s fashion disaster and that's what i'm living (laughs) Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. Um, Do do you ever play as uh princess heart no why not the the Cheryl costume the Cheryl costume oh, oh, yeah. where she can I... use lasers and stuff they put it in Dead by Daylight it's so Shit. cute I have not played Dead by Daylight in a while I will go through phases where I play a ton of it and I'm very obsessive and then mm-hmm. very long periods where I don't play it at all but I always like keep an eye on it um, just because like I love it so much I've been playing it since Clown came out mm-hmm. but uh, it. it PvP games stress me out pretty bad, especially that one. I mean, it, it, it's it's meant to be horror. It's meant to be anxiety-inducing. It's meant to put you on the edge of your seat. And yeah. 
just whether it's intentional or not, the game design can be frustrating. So yeah, I'm with you. Oh, I, yeah. I try. So I, I, I hate multiplayer games. I just won't play them. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, cause I don't want to be beholden to anyone else's schedule. I'm just going to do <laughs> my own thing when You're I'm ready to do up. it. It, I'm not. Uh, and so I, I tried once, Layton, we played uh, DVD for a couple hours with some friends, and I had no fucking clue what I was doing. <laughs> I found that game mechanic to be pretty much inscrutable. Yeah, you're, you're basically like, it takes maybe minimum 500 hours to be passable uh, at the game. But yeah, Brian played killer and we gave him some pointers and kind of <laughs> threw a little bit so oh, he could get get a chance there. Brutal. But he played as the doctor because he has a PhD. So it felt felt appropriate. appropriate. Yes. Dr. Brian. Mm-hmm. Dr. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I I feel like you have to start with Survivor and you have to start with friends that know what they're doing. So you can sort of learn and observe and they can sort of shadow you and you can sort of um, be carried a little bit because there is a learning curve. And the best way to learn either role is by playing the opposite one. Mm -hmm. Um, But the easier one to do is to play Survivor so that you can rely on other people. Kill- killer I, is so much more stressful it sure I, is you're the one running the show you're the center of you're, you're at the center of the ring like britney spears mm. everyone is looking <laughs> to you to interact with them like you can as a survivor you got plenty of things to do as as the killer like the game moves based on how you stop them from the generators or cut them off or hit them or hook them or whatever like after the gens are done, they're just running around in circles. If you never, if if you're if you're standing around or hiding, yeah, and the the self esteem blow of <laughs> just getting clowned on by all of them is mm-hmm. de- devastating. It's it very is. funny, but it is devastating. It is um, so tough. <laughs> who are, who are your favorite killers to play, dear? I like the pig. She's Very cute nice. when she gets hit by a pallet. She's like, <laughs> like it sounds like a sneeze. Yeah. Um, my favorite killer to go against is Michael Myers. I especially like when he wears his like little gown, his hospital gown, because yes. yeah. I think he looks great in his dress. Um, I just love Michael Myers. I love Halloween. Well, that's that Michael and Ghostface too. If you have a good one, both actually make it feel like a horror game, like a scratched mirror Myers uh, on Larry. Uh huh. Uh-huh. It's just just jump scares nonstop, and I yeah. love that. Or Tombstone. Woo. Just so you know, Brian and anyone listening at home, scratched Mirror Myers means he can see through walls. So oh, okay. you are never hiding from Michael Myers with, with a sm- yeah. scratch mirror. And if he has a tombstone, he can kill you even if you have not even done anything in the game at all. You just look at him and he can just snatch you and kill you. Is that that's a power up that anybody can have or that just something Michael that's like Myers? Special? No, no. But it, can you always get that with him or is that you, something you need so... to buy? <laughs> There's a whole blood web meta economy mm-hmm. of Dead by Daylight, which is how you get your perks and your add-ons. Scratched Mirror and Tombstone are add-ons for Michael Myers, but they're really rare ones. Mm-hmm. So you, you you don't get a bunch of them, but every once in a while, <laughs> it's like, no. And most Michael Myers, I would say, save up for those. Like, like I yeah. would say he's a sort of rare killer because he's one of the ones where you have to actually spend money because he's a mm-hmm. licensed character. Yeah. So someone that has him probably wanted him and they're going to make good use of him by finding the the really scary uh, add-ons, which are really fun. Yeah. But you have, a, he... you have a point that there's a lot. It, it's like you have to work at the game to understand it. Like you said, you, it takes your 500 entry hours. Like there's it's a complicated game even though it sounds really simple like just run away or kill yeah but it's complicated yeah Yeah. i um pig i I really like the realm of stealth killers and i really wish that they were more viable at higher levels because this game especially i feel like punishes you for being good Mm -hmm. at it Mm -hmm. and so like like Onrio, I really like Onrio. I think she has like Me some too. of the coolest sound design and she's so cute and I love the ring. And she's little. She's small. She's like this big. <laughs> uh, and she has TVs. Like that's my that's yeah. that, that's my whole vibe, but mm-hmm. she it's so difficult if you are against anybody who knows what they're doing. Like Yeah. I I completely agree. I I love my favorites probably are the pig the Onryo, Sadako, the ring, bitch. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, Pinhead. Those are probably like my top oh. three, but their mechanics are really like cool and interesting and fun, but they're really weird and they skew so hard on luck. Like, I feel yeah. like if you go against a wraith, like you can eventually catch up because you can go invisible. You can like sprint at people. And then there's the teleporting divas, like the nurse, like they are fine with any team that's thrown at them, more or less. But those three, unless you play, like, really, like, like you'll get yelled at. <laughs> like, yeah. it's tough for them. And the pig is my number one favorite, but she has a poor base kit, in my opinion. Like, she's not fast enough. If she was a little bit faster, I feel like she'd be really imposing. Or if her dash move had an instant down or an add-on that made it have an instant down. But the fact that when she's stealthy, she is super-duper slow. And even if you're not stealthy, you're still super-duper slow. Like, chases last forever unless you have um, Spirit Fury or uh, Blood Favor or something to, like, block yeah. the pallets or something to slow down the gens. Like, you'll get... I always say, my wig is in the mud. My wig has been thrown in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> I So, is the, new, is the new killer the bone collector the skull Maybe. merchant the skull merchant wait wait yes. wait hold on what was the bone collect wasn't that a denzel washington movie from the early 2000s am that i remembering that correctly right. or that angelina right. jolie or something like, who was in the bone Co hold on now i have to look there's up. also like a really shitty horror movie called the collector yeah that one i know of that isn't good uh, but uh, gets <sighs> points for using the entirety of bella lugosi's dead during it which I respect. Well, hmm. guess what? I have correctly identified the two main stars of the Bones Angelina Jolie and Denzel Washington. I was right. Oh on wow! So, wow! Nineteen ninety nine is good for you. Yep, I'm pretty good at my job. <laughs> so yes, the the Skull Merchant. I can't believe I went straight for Bone Collector. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's some, that's close enough. I think. Yeah. I mean, Collector rolls off the tongue better than Merchant. So I don't know why they named her that. I don't really like... Yeah, when her mask isn't even a skull, like... She does collect the skulls of her victims. That Like, that's what her drones are made of, but... Uh, I'm yeah. sorry, I, I need to go back to this. Listen to this cast from The Bone Collector. <laughs> <laughs> Denzel Washington. Mm -hmm. Great. Angelina Jolie. Mm -hmm. Queen Latifah. Oh. Michael Rooker. Luis Guzman. And, of course... Ed O'Neill. Wow. Al Bundy himself. Ed O'Neill. What a wow. Cast. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. How many? I, I like, how many I tomatoes like does a, it have? Well, okay. Oh, yeah. let, let's see. Uh, let me look it up on Rotten Tomatoes. It did well at a, for a budget of forty-eight million. It made one hundred and fifty-one point five. We're gonna look up Bone Collector Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh. This feels like a capitalizing oh. on the success of oh. seven type. The, probably. 100%. Yeah. Uh, the, well, here, look, here's really the question. This is almost a personality test. Do you say tomato meter or tomatometer? Because I definitely <laughs> say tomatometer. Tomatometer is way more fun. I it agree. Uh, the uh, tomatometer is at a, a pretty depressing 28% on this, <laughs> which is not not good i love saying things in funny ways like that <laughs> one time i was playing fall guys and someone's name was shit crap man and i was uh -huh. playing with a friend and they were like oh shit crap man he's here <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was so which funny. works for every superhero like mm -hmm. spider-man superman Batman. yep spiderman mm -hmm. yep exactly <laughs> uh yeah i i my favorite version of that is pronouncing butthole batholay Wow. Which is I that think for, is, is that what's for dinner? Yes, Batholay. <laughs> that's right. Wow. Uh, Anything with all the, the stops. Yeah. <laughs> um, dear, you mentioned that you went to school for illustration. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Where did you go? Um, just for security reasons, I don't share exactly where I went, but um, I'm from Fair New enough. England. So mm -hmm. I went to school for illustration in New England. And I got to say, I do not keep up with my craft. I'm not a working illustrator or anything like that. But I feel like it really set me up for success with like my aesthetic and my point of view. Because yeah. um, I took architecture classes. I took like nude, like study classes. I took painting classes, like still lifes and abstract and just... um 
art history classes and I had the time of my life there. I had the time of my boobs. I feel like it really, um, it influences my everyday life with like my drag and with just everything. I feel like I'm so grateful for all that knowledge and all that um, experience. But if you're going to ask me to take out my portfolio, I don't have much of a portfolio. (laughs) I wish that I stuck with it more, but I fell in love with drag and um, being a makeup artist after school. So that's where my life took me. So how, what was that transition like? Did you start doing drag when you were in school or like, how did that come into your life? Um, When I was... Well, ever since I was a child, I loved, like, ultra-feminine, like, just femme fatale women. Mm -hmm. Like, my favorite game when I was a kid was Mortal Kombat 2, and Melina and Katana just, like, were my everything. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. I was, I think, in the first grade, and I was drawing Melina and Katana on, like, the margins of my tests and stuff like that. Like, just cuckoo for them. Um, And Melina is my favorite one of my favorite characters. I love Mortal Kombat even to this day. Like I was playing Mortal Kombat 11 a few days ago just because I was like, I haven't played this in a while. I want to see Melina. (laughs) Um, But I just loved strong women Mm -hmm. as a kid. And um, so it made me fall in love with makeup because like if you watch a Disney film, like all the strong female badass villains have like exquisite gorgeous makeup so as a teenager i played with makeup on myself and on my friends and on my mom and when i was um graduating high school i started to become like a makeup artist so i went to um art school but i was working at the mat counter during my college years and so that made me fall in love with drag and with um like editorial makeup and dramatic makeup and glitter and glitz and fashion and stuff like that so it just sort of loving feminine fashionable ladies as a child just Mm -hmm. took me into the um fashion illustration and makeup kind of world did did you learn a lot about makeup by working at the makeup counter or was it kind of just a job where you where you didn't actually get that much from it? Oh, I worked at Mac. I worked at yeah. Mac. So um, in the late 2000s, working at Mac was like you worked at a fashion runway. Like mm-hmm. they were training you all the time. You could do all this like um, exquisite, gorgeous, intricate makeup. So I feel like working there, I worked there for over 10 years. And oh, wow. they really set me up for success. They don't teach you how to do drag makeup, but they teach you so many techniques to really go at a face all different ways. Like you never know what customer is going to sit in front of you and you have right. to um, address their features um, in the ways that they want. But also you have to be knowledgeable on like what fashion dictates and like sure. what um, stereotypes dictate and stuff like that. Like, oh, you have bushy brows. Well, do you want to make them look more thin and more styled or do you want them to be more bushy? Like stuff like that. So, but yeah, you have to be versatile. So they train you like, like they train you so hard and on so many things. Um, I'm and that's not sure part of about, the job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they're like trainer roles and you have to go to different cities for training and um, Mac supports wow. um, movies and fashion shows and stuff like that. I've worked on fashion shows. I've never worked on a movie or a television uh, show set, mm-hmm. but um, you have to be really skilled to keep that job or at least sure. um, I'm not sure what they're doing after pandemic, but before right. pandemic you had to be super duper skilled, top of the line, best makeup artist. Everybody had to be to work there. So mm-hmm. they really gave me the tools to thrive as a makeup artist outside of there and also as a drag queen they gave me the tools to like build upon um my own dreams so do you have to audition to to work there essentially like you come in and they make you do makeup to at mac <laughs> like when you first start out what are they yeah. looking for um when i started there it was super competitive like nowadays there's so many makeup brands out there that um they have to be more competitive with like the price points and with the sure. accessibility and stuff like that. But back then the competitiveness was you go into that store and you're going to get the best service. Mm-hmm. So they would, um, you, I, my, when I interviewed to work there, I had to go to a group interview and it was like, you have a round table where you talk to all the managers and even like the 
people that go around and manage multiple different places. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to interview with them as a group and see how you are in the setting. And then um, you also had to bring a friend with you and you'd have to give them a makeover like within a half hour, like a full makeup look. And they'd be like, here's a kit of makeup. We're not going to tell you what to do with it. We're not going to tell you what they are. Like, hopefully you've been to a mat counter before or Mm -hmm. you've been on the website or hopefully you've touched makeup before. We're just going to see what you do. And, um, but you could bring in a face you knew to work yes, with. Not yes. ju- they're not just going to sit some random person in well, front of you. Well, actually, you're mm. you're unlocking memories that I haven't even thought of in forever. So I remember I had like a second interview, and mm-hmm. at that one they switched the models. Oh, it's because you bring wow. a friend, but it's like here's the model that you're going to paint, and like you're right in that you've probably painted them before and you know how to address their features. But they were like, okay, everybody, sit right here. Okay, stand in front of your model. There's your makeup there. There's your model. It's like everybody take a step to the left, and oh you're going to help that person wow. next to you. And it was like, whoa, <gasps> and that yeah. really tested the people that um that knew that that had the potential to be a makeup artist or the um people that just knew how to do the makeup on that face that they've done before. Did, so did, did you expect that at the time or, I mean, um, or, or was this just like a total shock? Oh my God, what the fuck am I going to do? I think that I'm, so I'm not the like quickest queen on my feet. Like I, I don't come up with like, like a sassy comeback or like a pun for everything, mm-hmm. but I feel like I go with the flow and I can adapt. Mm-hmm. And that's probably what, got me the job and that's probably what got me to where I am today is just like you know whatever happens just pivot and work with it and see what happens and do it yeah so I feel like it didn't bother me at the time especially because I was like I want to be a makeup artist and you're not going to be doing you're you're not going to be like Lady Gaga's makeup artist doing only her face every single day you have to work to that kind of job so Mm -hmm. I was like I'm going to help whoever's in front of me and slay them that's and so that's great. and that's stuff that I um I'm so grateful for because they really really like did hone in on my skill and um make me the makeup artist and have give me the artistic eye that I have today as well as when I went to art school because um do y'all know bitch puddin? I know. So bitch puddin is the winner of season two of Dragula, which is like the the gothy scary um drag competition show. You can watch it on Shutter actually mm-hmm. but really she, yeah so she, okay. so look up dragula it's by the boulet brothers it's super 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 cool um if you love drag and you love horror then honey they got that's you. it that's great. it is it is over um but bitch Putin is the winner of season two of dragula and we're we're buddies we actually hosted the twitch drag showcase together in san diego um awesome. in october i love it but um I was in LA, like I mentioned a few days ago, and I painted her. So like my my favorite thing, I love makeup, I love beauty, I love drag, I love fashion, I love all of it so much. Like I'm very passionate about it. And one of the most special things for me is to take a friend and paint them, like do their makeup, whether it's mm-hmm. a drag look or a beauty look, or just like to just do one feature. Like it is so yeah. special and intimate to me. And so because of that, I was like, bitch, let me paint you. Let me paint you. And I like, it's not even like a, oh, I think I could transform you different. Or like, I want to teach you drag. Like it's nothing about her or her drag or anyone's drag, but um, it's just special and selfish for me. And so I got to paint her a few days ago and it was just so, 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 so cool and so fun. And since you mentioned it, like, oh, like, was it scary doing a new face or a new feature? Um, She told me, she was like, people never know what to do with my nose. Mm-hmm. Cause like, you know, my drag nose is very like shaped, yeah, but yeah. it's all illusion. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was like, people don't know what to do with my nose. They paint my other features and then they just don't know what to do with my nose. And it's like, not great. But I was like, I'm a makeup artist, honey. I'm just going to look <laughs> at your nose and I'm going to do what I do to it. And I really like, she was like, no one's ever painted my nose like this. No one has ever oh, that's so great. gone in and done this wow. and i was what a really compliment proud of it. too yeah you should yeah. be that's fantastic mm-hmm. and she's beautiful she does great drag herself if are y'all in la yes we are yeah. go go to bitchin at precinct mm-hmm. uh it's it's her it's actually this friday um it's tomorrow yeah the 10th yeah. it's a sailor moon themed show but every oh, second oh, awesome. friday of uh of the month she has her own show and it's all alternative not not all alternative but it's it's a celebration of drag it's not just one type of drag it, you'll get bearded queens you'll get femme queens you'll get kings you'll get people of all different ethnicities and um gender identities and it's just a celebratory 
show, usually with a theme. But she's such a doll. She's that such a, awesome. an amazing friend. But it was just an example of like taking those skills that I learned years ago and just adapting and pivoting and just going with your gut in a makeup way. That's so great. Uh, I was going to ask too. Uh, I'm curious what like uh, uh, what your history with horror games is. Like, what was the first? You know, it's kind of a cliche question, but as a kid, like, what was your in with horror games? I, I, I'll ask because I remember my, I'm not like a huge horror gamer, although I do like them. But I remember Uninvited. I don't know if uh, I don't know that I one. Tell me about was, it. Do I need it? Is it on GOG? Uh, it is <laughs> an old school uh, like point and click uh, adventure game that I played on Mac in Ooh. like late 80s probably late 80s early 90s this looks awesome <laughs> and it was I need were, to god, that. god what the fuck was the there was another one of the same uh studio and i can't remember the name right now dead something i think oh but this is gorge isn't that cool so it's like very uh uh i think they might have put it on uh, SNES or something like that too when it came out, but I, I was playing specifically the Mac port, which was black and white, you know, very like uh, kind of pointillistic uh, black and white art, and you know, at the time, the scariest fucking thing I had ever experienced, you know. I bet because uh, it was just so new and fresh, and no one had ever done this before. Yep, and you I know, would that, play that yeah, version ahead. is on Steam. It's it is. it's part the of Mac the Mac version adventure series. The Wait a Mac minute! Adventure. The Mac <gasps> Ventures. I need to look at this immediately because that was <laughs> two ninety nine. What a that deal. was exactly my childhood. This Shadowgate. Ver- Shadowgate. Vu. Fucking Shadowgate. Oh my god. Shadowgate. I loved Shadowgate. That's uh, wild. Yeah. Brian, know, sound, sounds like we've got some mini soda fodder. I think we do. Oh, oh Shadow Gate. Shadow Gate. This, this looks just like there's an Elvira game, actually. Yes. And it's I just like the Elvira game. game. Yeah. It's from like the late 80s or 90s, and it's yep. just like a point and click, and she's like your host or something, and then she gets kidnapped. So, like, you're not even interacting with her that much. It's just like in a castle. I remember seeing yeah. pictures of it as a kid. Deja that's vu. So cool. The other one here is the one I was. That's the one I was thinking of. That's like a uh, a murder mystery thing. I love wow. it. Uh, my first. I can't really th- recall what my very like. I can recall like my first video game period. I think was Commander Keen. I would watch my brother and my dad play it on mm. DOS. Um, and then I remember going to the arcades and playing Mortal Kombat. Two, I of think, course. was like my favorite because like the imagery was all like sexy and dark, and I was, yep, in like the first grade or something. I'm like, this is so like cool and provocative, and like you could behead <laughs> each other. And I remember I begged and begged and begged my dad to get me Mortal Kombat Two because we only only had a computer at the time. And I remember he was like, I got it, and then it was the demo, so you could oh, only no. play as Katana or like <laughs> Reptile. And I was like, you can't be the pink one. I don't want this. <laughs> But I would still play it over and over and over and over. And it was, um, I think it was on a floppy disk. Mm-hmm. Um, but the first horror game where I knew it was horror and I was like, what is that about? I remember we were on vacation and my parents are from the South. So we went from like New England down to the South and we mm-hmm. visited, my brother is four years older than me. So when we moved from there, I was super young, but he was like old enough to have like friends and he went to school and memories and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we visited an old friend and they played Resident Evil 1 on mm. the PlayStation. And all I remember is, like, they didn't want the little kids with them, so I was somewhere else. And I remember, like, mm-hmm. peeking, and they were in... Um, if you know Resident Evil, it's that little long hallway where you put the crests yes. in to go yeah, yeah. to the guest house. Mm-hmm. And um, they had already gotten the hunters. So I remember my brother playing as Jill wearing blue, fighting a hunter in a hallway. And I was just like iconic it was just like so i don't know it was just so fascinating well because there's something at that age too that feels it's it's dangerous but in an acceptable acceptable mm -hmm, way like mm -hmm. all horror games right yeah there's no actual danger but especially as a little kid when so i have an eight-year-old daughter Uh and she you know she's been very curious about dead space 
Ooh. And because I just got it for the PS5. Mm-hmm. And so she'll mm-hmm. like peek in the room and be it's like, a gross out. Yep. She'll be like, <laughs> Daddy, are you playing Dead Space? And she's kind of lingering at the door and just trying to look at you know, so I can see the curiosity. Mm-hmm. The but curiosity also, for sure. If she sees too much, I'm gonna be hearing about it for weeks. Yeah. You yeah. know. Well, I remember she saw when you got Dead by Daylight on your Switch. She Ooh. she came out and was like, "What's Dead by Daylight?" And I was like, <laughs> "Because I don't want to fucking deal with it. You can never open that game." <laughs> like, cuz I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it at 9:30 at night. Yeah. Yeah. This this child's going to become a full-on toxic uh flashlight clicky sweatboard. <gasps> oh, <Yeah. laughs> she'd be one of those. Get him at, get him oh. at a young age yes. and then yeah. She'll be hooked and yeah. she'll be so skilled. Yeah. But sorry, I, inter- I interrupted. <laughs> no, you were saying no. Resident Evil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Resident Evil is the first one where I like I recalled that memory. Like I recall where I was and I remember the scene and I was just like, ooh, because they had like the friend was like, ooh, I, I want to show you this game. But like the the littler ones can't see it. So it's all like, ooh, what are mm-hmm. y'all doing? Yeah. Um, but yeah, all that. I just love horror. I think it's because and that was probably new to me being like you can't see this because as a kid my brother would all and my dad would rent vhs tapes of horror movies so like mm-hmm. i remember tales from the hood oh yeah sure so much when i was yep. a little kid yeah like i was a little tot and that one scared me and then they got a lot of the anthology movies i forget what the other ones were called but it was always like tales of the crypt and stuff like that and so I was allowed yep. to watch uh, those. Creep Show, of course. Creep Show mm-hmm. and Creep Show mm-hmm. Two. That's George Romero, uh, right? Yes. Yep. So uh, yeah. I had seen scary movies before, but then like being told, "Oh, you can't see the scary video game," and it's so funny because I still to this day get like on the edge of my seat at a movie, but games because I'm in control, like it doesn't phase me, it doesn't mm-hmm. scare me. That's um, really interesting. I'm the exact <laughs> opposite way. I I love horror movies. They don't, you know. I don't get horror games though the fact that I am in control stresses me out so bad that I get really freaked out so like I have to watch somebody else do it because I get too freaked out it's so but interesting movies, right? totally fine it's there's like some sort of um I don't know the psychology of it but like to me it's like a movie happens to me like whether right. my eyes are closed or opened or if I'm watching it or if I walk away like it's going it's going Mm -hmm. and it's not going to stop till it's done but a video game it's like if that monster wants to get me honey i'll just (laughs) i you know i have to go do something to get the monster to jump out uh i i whereas i'm scared by both like i'm not, (laughs) not a big horror person whether it's a movie or a game uh uh you know if it's like the zombie stuff i can deal with it great in a movie especially mm-hmm. like the sam raimi kind of comedic stuff but yeah. anything that is at all realistic i am too squeamish if i feel like a person's actually being hurt i i can't deal with it, it it's it's too much for me i totally understand the the realism is probably what gets me about movies like if it if it feels too realistic and plausible like you mentioned like that's probably what makes me like ooh, ooh, ooh. yes i have such but, a um, clear memory in high school they showed us this <gasps> movie Danton about the French Revolution uh, which I believe was a Gerard Depardieu movie and there's like a guillotine scene and they chop Ooh. someone's head off and I had this is one of the two times in my life when I have almost passed out yeah. like actually yeah. almost passed I walked out in the hallway really? and felt lightheaded like you can see like the stump of the head why the why you would show this to a group of high schoolers is completely beyond me but okay whatever i totally understand because that sort of happened to me i had a psychology class and we were like going over brain stuff and they showed us a film of someone getting live brain surgery and they showed everything and like they were like touching in there and it was like live (laughs) like the guy was awake because it was like a test of some kind so they were like how do you feel when we do this how do you and i remember i was like i i thought i was gonna pass away it's the worst feeling a nightmare to me like i i understand that we are all human things mm-hmm. with you know we're bags in, of meat intricate stuff in there but i don't want to know when i no, when that, i play mortal Kombat, i pretend that it's a fantasy world that like that stuff isn't in me that's right yes of course <laughs> yeah the, the brain is like definitely one of those things that you should never be able to see yeah like and it, unless unless the person's dead and it's like 
in formaldehyde or whatever. <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in seeing seeing a brain. There's yeah. uh, there's an Terrifying. experimental film in black and white, uh, the act of seeing with one's own eyes. I think it's called. It's just it's just like an autopsy movie, but it's one of those ones that you watch and it's like, thank God this is silent. This does not need sound. <laughs> I don't want to no, know pass. what sounds this Hard made. Pass. I'm good. Yeah. Also, our surprise guest for this episode is man who is currently walking on my roof and who I expect might hop down onto my balcony. So, yay! <laughs> oh, I'm excited when they tell the me these things. Just the, the... it always does seem like it's exactly during a recording when it's like, oh, there's a leaf blower convention that's passing through yes. my neighborhood right now. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's awesome. But, In the same mm. way that maybe only ever barks if I am recording. When when I went to move her earlier, it was because she was stuck under this blanket and didn't know how to get out and was barking. <laughs> so I would remove her from her blanket prison. <laughs> she has been removed from the set. Yeah. I yeah. uh, is now a good time to move on to some segments. Like, I think it might be. I think, I think it, it might be. be. Uh, and that's foreplay. That's right. Let's get into the, the meat of the episode. Uh, so our first segment is our pop culture recommendation segment. This is where you get to talk about a book, a movie, a video game, whatever, something you've been enjoying recently. The name of this segment is What's Poppin'? And it does have a theme song, but I do not have the ability, and I want to be clear about this, Layden, have never had the ability to play the theme song during a recording. <laughs> so in the future, when we, in post-production... The theme song will go here. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? All right. Now, dear, I'm going to ask you the question I like to ask all of our guests, which is, if you were to have heard the theme song, what would you have thought of it? Wow. So beautiful. Thank you. Truly iconic. Really left a huge impression on me. I'll never forget it. Thank you so much. I wrote it myself, and I and I do appreciate that. You know, you need to get what the streamers have. I don't do it, but like people have um, sound boards, mm -hmm. and so they have, yeah, they have a stream deck linked up with their mic, and so, you know, you'll be talking to someone, and then suddenly they're singing like Ariana Grande or whatever. Like it's okay. just like yeah. clips and stuff. You can have like Simpsons quotes and whatever you want. All right. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, Brian. You should have that. You should. I shall. I, you know what, Use Layton? The stream I will, deck I, that you own. I will. That I you own one. I, I I can neither confirm nor deny mm. that I own a stream deck. Rumor is you might I, have one. <laughs> I will look into it. Let me just say that it's cool. It's cool. But, but also, I like I like you being like, "What did you think of the thing that you definitely you know experienced?" It's I, I like it too it's because nice. I, I I think it gives people permission to have a genuine reaction to something. Right. Mm -hmm. But a reaction to something that they haven't experienced, which yeah. is arguably the most interesting kind. Yeah. So late. So because yes. if, you, if you actually disagree with what you said, then you're a liar. Yeah. And you know what? If I don't like what people say, you can always edit it out of the episode. <laughs> just, <laughs> so. just Jarek off. cut Brian's entire track. Layton doesn't realize that Jarek's away this week, so I can do whatever the fuck I want. Layton, what's popping? Uh, what's popping for me, other than the sound of if they are taking the tarp off of my roof, oh my God. I'm gonna be that would be amazing. So mad because okay, this what th are they this doing is up totally. There? So my apartment was built in the 20s. The ceiling leaks with the raining. It's been very bad, and so they finally put tarps up. But the way I had like an old dog gate that it was leaning against the back of my apartment just in case I need to use it. It's just out there. So they put down the tarp and then they like held it down with my gate and then like a hammer. So there was just like a tarp and a hammer and a gate on my roof for the past like three weeks. Mm -hmm. And the wind started going really crazy. So it's been like just a bundle of dog gate and tarp and a random hammer. So... I hope that they are putting it back down in a more solid way because ceiling leak. But if they're completely and it's, it's going it to rain tomorrow, away, by the way, it's, it's also going to rain tomorrow. Yes, it's OK. You know, it's probably not because there's only a 100 percent chance of rain tomorrow, according to hmm. the weather app. So oh, you're probably worse. Right my, my blood pressure could be hail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it could be hail. And it was hail a couple of weeks ago. I, yeah. I missed the I was out of town. Unfortunately, I was there last week and it was like little 
balls of snow. It wasn't even. It was crazy. Like it was hard enough to be considered hail, but it was snow. Yes. I was like, we're in LA. (laughs) If they're they're taking that tarp down, I'm going to lose it. It's okay. It's it's atmosphere. What's pop? You're going to go out there and yell. (laughs) Don't touch my tarp. (laughs) Um, What's popping for me is. I found a playlist on Spotify that's just called Ambient Western. And like, mm. you know, it's not the best playlist I've ever listened to, but it's it's the description that really sold this playlist to me, which was Big Sky Chill, Boot Gaze, Deep Thought Cowboy, Whoa. High Lonesome, Stagecoach Radio. <laughs> that's phenomenal. Boot Gaze? Boot Gaze boot is gaze. unbelievable. High wow. Lonesome? Yeah, so that that's what's popping for me. I've just been popping on my my boot gaze. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That's fantastic. Dear, what's popping for you? What's popping for me? Uh I'm a creature of habit, so I just like get really passionate about the things that like I've been doing. So, um a few m- months ago, I got a retro tink. Do y'all know what that is? No. So it's an upgrader for uh, retro consoles. So it's for all the way from your Super Nintendo to like your PS2, Xbox, GameCube era. Cool. And so I've been playing a lot of retro games. I'm going to play this one today. Ooh. Resident Evil 4, yes. So on, on Mondays, I have Capcom Monday because I'm a Capcom creator, but I'm also a Capcom fan. Like I'm a rabid Capcom yeah. fan, the Resident Evils, the Silent, mm. or no, I almost said Silent Hills. I meant to say Street <laughs> Fighter. I, I know my different companies. Konami <laughs> does Silent Hill. Um, Resident Evil, Street Fighter, all the one-offs. But um, on Mondays, I have Capcom Mondays because it lets what me be like idea. that huge nerdy fan of um, the 90s and 2000s Capcom games. Mm-hmm. So um, on Monday, I was away, so I didn't get a Capcom Monday. But today is the Resident Evil. I, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm making your podcast very speci- a specific no, moment it's in great. time. I love it. No, but today it is, is the Capcom Spotlight. So they're going to be mm-hmm. showing us Exo Primal. They're going to be showing us Resident Evil oh, cool. Remake. They're going to probably show us some Street Fighter Six, maybe some Ghost Trick, maybe some Mega Man. So I'm so, so, so excited. I didn't get to have a Capcom Monday this past Monday because I was away. But um, I'm making it up on Capcom Spotlight Day. So Resident Evil 4 on the PS2 last Monday was under the skin for the PS2. I'm on a PS2 kick. And Mm -hmm. I've been a collector and a fan of Capcom for for forever. So these are just like in my drawer collecting dust. And the Monday before that was Resident Evil Dead Aim. Mm -hmm. So I'm just getting into my Capcom zhush. I love it. And feeling good about it. Now, I take it Under the Skin has nothing to do with the Scarlett Johansson movie, right? That is a totally different... I don't know that okay. movie, and it is definitely nothing nothing to do with that movie. Well, it's a, it's a horror movie. It oh, is really? A, it, is a, it is a horror movie that you might like, dear. Ooh. It's, it's very, like, abstract. It's very intellectual, I would say, hmm. right? It's, yeah. Or... or I, what, maybe that's not the right, the right word. Uh, it's, it's like experimental horror a little bit. Yeah. I don't consider myself an academic, but I do like <laughs> things that push envelopes and make you think and it's um, visually... sort of be provoking in, in ways and be provocative. Like, So that sounds really interesting and fun to me. This game is stupid. It's let me show you that one more time. Yeah, I gathered yeah, from please. the cover it was not the you know it was not the game version of the movie. You're <laughs> a little adorable. alien that Yay. goes to Earth and you like transform into characters um, oh, rules. by getting under their skin and like like wearing them as like a bot as like a suit and playing pranks on them to take their money. And it has a cameo <laughs> of Jill and Nemesis from Resident Evil Yay. 3. Wow. For no that rule. It's, it's so that's random. so cute. But that's it's adorable. That, that is kind of that is kind of the plot of Scarlet it, Johansson It's not under too dissimilar, skin. yes. Yeah. Maybe they both read the same novel. <laughs> it's true. Brian What's popping? Lay it on us. What's popping for me this week uh, is a book I've been reading. Uh, the book is Dilla Time by Dan Charnas. It's a, uh, it's a biography, mostly, of the legendary hip-hop producer Jay Dilla. And so this guy is a journalist, and he goes into... So Jay Dilla was the kind of person who... 
Uh, he was very well beloved in the hip hop community during his lifetime, but then he died very, very young from kind of lupus related stuff. I think it was like 32, 33, something like that. Um, and after he died, suddenly everybody, you know, his fame spread and now, uh, everybody knows who he is. And it's just a, it's a story of his life and his, you know, uh, very revolutionary way of making beats. And it's a really interesting book. It's not too music theoretic, so you don't need to be a, a music expert to, to get something out of it. But it's also just an interesting story about a guy is Detroit. You know, he was like pre Eminem uh, from Detroit. So there wasn't a big hip hop scene in Detroit at the time. And it's just a story of this guy and his family and his genius level production. And I'm learning a lot, a lot from it. You know, some of your favorite musicians are in there. Uh, talks a lot about uh, Questlove, the Roots guys, uh, people like that. And it's it's just it. I find it really interesting. And uh, it's it, the other thing that's really cool about it is the way he was working on production. What he was known for was, you know, just making things in kind of odd, slightly off timings. And it's a lot of how he had to do that was pre pro tools and audio, you know, being able to manipulate audio with a computer. So he's doing this all on, you know, old school, like drum machines and in a way that nobody had thought of before. So it's a cool book. Uh, wow. And yeah, I really couldn't recommend it more. And it's also just, you know, it's about a very specific hip hop subculture, Detroit based hip hop, which, uh, you know, is it, like any subculture, there's a ton of interesting shit happening and it's fun to, to read about it and all the different people who populate it. So, yeah. Dill of Time by Dan Charnas. And, and it's a very recent book, just came out last year. I love hearing you gush about it. Yeah, it's That's it's so, so cool. cool. Like, And his, you know, it's one of those things where what I love about his music is if you just listen to it kind of in the background, you'd be like, what's the big deal? I mean, it sounds like it's hip hop, whatever. You know, it's mm -hmm. pretty straightforward. But when you sit down and listen to it, if you know what you're listening for, you're like, whoa, whoa, that is weird. And it's very easy to just, you know, pass by it on first glance like it's everything you've ever heard. But if you're listening carefully for it, you can kind of, there's there's a level at which it sort of feels maybe a little different. And when you really pay attention to it, something is going on. And he had an influence that if you look up what he released, it wasn't a lot during his lifetime, but his influence is just huge. And in a sense, like everybody started doing it that way. And, wow. uh, and the guy was just an innate musician, you know, just like had this kind of, you know, I've never went to school for any of this shit. It was just doing it in his basement ever since he was a kid, came from a musical family and just had this really off kilter sense of timing, which ended up you know, becoming in some sense, like a, a very dominant way that people produce hip hop. So, Interesting. Yeah. So his, his innovative, his innovation was like subtle in a way. Yeah. So it's like, like you don't catch on, but it's, it's very interesting the way that he composed. Yeah. So what he would do, I mean, what he was known for was so in, you know, if you're in like standard four, four time, which you might, you know, like, you know, boom, pop, boom, boom, you know, if you're just kind of going on the beat, he would make all the snares a little early. So boom, bap, boom, boom, bap. you know, just a little oh, I'm not doing it well because it's actually pretty hard to <laughs> wow, uh, replicate as a human. But what he was able to do was use these at the time advanced drum machines to change all the timings a little bit and make them just enough off that you kind of feel it more than you intellectualize it. You know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah. And it's a, That's I didn't really, really know. really interesting. I didn't know anything about him as a person or his life or his history. And it goes into to all of that uh, too, as well. A little bit about the history of Detroit and, you know, what, where, where he came from and how the city influenced him. So, yeah. Neat. I love it. Uh, based on the jump that whoever is on my roof <laughs> just did, which I appreciate and cherish because it made my whole... They're doing jumping jacks. Yeah. Really good job. Yeah, we're doing some calisthenics out there on my roof. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, let's, you know, appropriately, let's move into the segment Peaches and Lemons, which mm -hmm. is a three-part gratitude exercise and one part petty grousing. And the theme song goes right here. Peaches and lemons. Peaches and lemons. Great. 
That was the theme song for Peaches and Lemons. And so we will each start with a lemon, which is a thing that is a minor bummer, annoyance, man doing calisthenics on your roof, what have you. I'll go first. <laughs> my, my lemon was was going to be <laughs> that, the, you know, the, when you're not supposed to be taking a nap, that's the best nap of all. And, you know, when you're really trying to get to sleep, you can't do it. But when you're supposed to oh, yes. be awake and shouldn't be napping, mm, the most delicious nap. Mm -hmm. But now the nap is what the fuck? He's like right there. I hear him. He's right there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's my lemon. Who else has Great. a lemon? Uh, I have a lemon. I can go. Uh, so this is not my lemon, but I was away for two weeks on a trip, which I'll talk about more in just a moment. Uh, and when I left to go on my trip, my house had a visiting dog, which was Layton's dog, because we were taking care of Layton's that's dog. That's nice. For, we, uh, great dog. We took care of her for about... Uh, a month or so and when I came back the dog had returned to Layton's house and we no longer had a little dog no. and I did the thing where I like we didn't have the dog for that long but I walked in and I looked for maybe and I was like oh the dog's gone well because maybe is also obsessed with Brian because uh, <laughs> my dog's very for all the obvious and reasons loves him. Yes. yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah, but you'll you'll get to see her this weekend. I will because you're coming over in a couple days. Yay! And, yep, and bring the dog, and we're very excited to to see you. So that's my lemon. I miss yeah. your dog. Brian's gonna be like, "Where's the dog? Where's the dog? Where's the Where's dog?" dog? <laughs> Late. We'll just push Layton out of the way. Get to the dog. Yes. Yeah. What about you, dude? Um, can lemons be like a lemon tree? Like, can they sure. be a big? Problem? They can be big. Absolutely. I am. Be upset and distraught and th all the like legislation and laws that have been proposed but have also passed in Tennessee like they're yeah. scary for my my friends and my family and for myself like I don't know what the future holds but I hope that it is just a minor roadblock in all of our stories I hope that it doesn't um set the tone for the rest of this year and the future because um drag is an art form and it's the culture of queer people and not everybody likes it and that's fine but to um misconstrue it and misrepresent it and make it into something that it's not and to um indoctrinate people into lies and misunderstandings is um going to be really awful and dangerous and is already awful and dangerous and i'm just like scared for the future and drag is art and drag is beautiful and it's performance and it's to be entertainment it's meant to be escapism and it's not to groom anybody it's not to get anyone to do it it's it's just literally to be inspiring and fun and um Sister Roma, who's from San Francisco, she made a video about this topic and she was like, she was like, let me just tell everybody, let, whoever needs to hear this, I, I would recommend anyone listening to go look it up, but sh basically what she said is drag story hour, which is what all of this boils down to, conservatives don't want little children around drag, which I think is fine, but it should be up to the parent if they think that the of drag course. is okay for their child yeah. just like anything like just like be everything. a parent and stand in the way of the things that you don't like on a personal level don't stand in front of other people but what sister roma said is drag story hour is to be beautiful and to be a um a, a thing of acceptance and to promote love it's for those children that are being pushed to the side by other people and being made fun of in school and don't have a place to thrive and to enjoy glitter and weird things and weird people like it's not to yeah. make them that way drag drag right. story hour and drag in general isn't trying to make anyone any certain way it's just to be enjoyed by the people that enjoy it yes and, and well, i mean to me what what is the most <clears throat> disgusting about this apart you know from the the real world harm that is happening to people is how uh just blatantly manipulative and mm -hmm. bullshit it is i guarantee you most of these politicians couldn't give two shits about uh drag shows they're just doing it as a culture war thing to bring people in 
and it is yeah. endlessly disgusting. It's just a scapegoat for hate. Yes, yeah. or just just a scapegoat for hate that they're using to win votes, mm-hmm. and it it you know it feels extremely both disingenuous and harmful, which yeah. is the worst possible case. I yeah. absolutely agree, and it's just terrifying and awful and i don't like children i don't want to be around a child i don't want any <laughs> child to be I don't, I don't want to consider a child anywhere um yeah not to say i don't enjoy the people that enjoy me but you know no i don't fair, go out of my way to enough. interact with a child of course um, and i'm sure yeah. most drag queens don't because they want to be around alcohol and they want to be around the party but right. like drag shows that are for children drag reading hour it's a toned down version of drag that is catering to its audience just like any entertainment form you think children's shows like children's shows have different content than adult oriented programs in yeah. general period no, it's like it's like so saying like, I, don't, I, I don't want music to be around children yeah so, well yeah. there's lots of different types of music fucking calm yeah. down mm-hmm. yeah. there's there's a really good uh trixie mattel has done two videos on girl defined the fundamentalist influencers <laughs> she's a but genius this, she's she really is yeah. um but she did a video about their they did a really stupid hour-long video about drag queen story time etc and she just has such a good point of view on it of exactly what you're saying of like you know she makes a good point of like not all drag is for everyone not all drag is going to be kid friendly but like that's not you people are conflating these things um it's just it's it's so depressing Mm -hmm. (sighs) but on the other hand if you really want people to get into something there's nothing better you can do than saying don't do that that's off limits yeah so what i hope is that the consequence is it's going to make people a lot more into drag than they were i mean because now it is giving it even more of an outre uh feel yeah absolutely i mean drag is so lucrative right now um like yes I was um I, I I went and looked at an apartment like a month ago and in the elevator was a sign that said like this Saturday drag brunch like at the mm-hmm. like at like at the apartment building like the apartments were throwing a drag show in California Amazing. just on a random Saturday just with um the local girls coming out and it, it was That's just so like great. so 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 cool I visited Toronto um in November mm-hmm. and I had I was like Oh my goodness. They had drag shows at a uh I think it was there was um there was a restaurant on the roof of Chinatown. Um there was a drag show at a bookstore. There was dra- like literally anywhere you go in Toronto there's a drag show there. Like I was mm-hmm. just like this is wild. It's so 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 cool cuz it's drag is just entertainment. That's all it is. Yeah and and, and this level of cultural like dominance was like unthinkable even 10 years ago i mean right like it has it's seen uh, drag has seen such a not research but but uh evolution and wild surge in popularity in the last you know whatever 10 ish years yeah Uh, now you just can't avoid it yeah i mean i i mean i'm in my line of work i I'm a drag queen that plays video games and right. I'm partnered with a lot of brands that with with like that make games or produce games or um, peripherals for gaming and stuff like that. And yeah. it's so much fun because I can be um, representative of my community in this sort of unexplored territory and yeah. pave the way for queerness to exist in even more places because at the end of the day it's just representation to me that's right because we exist we are here we're existing and video games are for everyone it's just like movies and television and any entertainment form where um anyone can love it and enjoy it and do it so i'm yeah trying to showcase that and i love i just love drag it's fun it's so much fun (laughs) and i think that's why uh conservative politicians are targeting it because it it is prominent just from like rupaul's drag race and stuff like that right but also um it's one of the easiest things to be like you do not understand this thing like like explain this thing and then you can make up any lies and that person will believe you because they don't know what they're looking at right yep unfortunately unfortunately but i here's hoping at least in the long term and well and the short term that you know uh, there's enough of a backlash that this shit just comes and bites him in the ass. I mean, I, it, it certainly I, seems uh, like that's a distinct possibility. And here's hoping. 
I just, like, I hope that one day we can focus on the actual evils in the world because yeah, yes, no exactly. drag queen anywhere wants to even be near a child, but there's so many politician and religion based things. And just, <laughs> you could go on and on about all these different things that are actual dangers to actual children and actual um, like institutions. Yeah. But yes. we would rather not we, cause I would never, but conservatives want to just point the finger and um, victim blame or uh, misconstrue information and make up lies and stuff like that. And they don't mind going for low blows, which is the scariest part. Yes. Just make up stuff yeah. until and keep shouting it until someone believes it. Yeah. Yeah. But TikTok, a lot of people there, there are tons of conservative people on TikTok, but also there's tons of people calling out shit on TikTok. So right. I love TikTok because when I streamed it to that platform, I'll get a troll. They'll be like, Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. And like so many people, they flood the chat. They're like, get out of here. You don't, we don't want you here. You, you shouldn't be here. Get the fuck out. Why are you even looking at a gay person if you don't want to be around them? Like right. <laughs> they just have no chill and it is hilarious. And I love it. Cause I'm used yeah. to, um, on Twitch, I have a fantastic community as well, but people are more like, oh no, there's a troll here. What do we do? It's like right. really weird. But on TikTok, people are like, <laughs> just they see something awful and they go in like tiktokers I, are brutal. brutal i'm not even on tiktok and i know that they go for it and i'm yeah. i'm grateful because it means that people have a voice and they use it and they yep. stand up for the ideologies that they believe in yeah so i'm grateful cool that Lame. is a very good and important lemon uh <laughs> Sorry to be but, so heavy with the lemon. No, it's I just it's, like no, when you're like, for. what's what's bothering you? Well, that is bothering me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we will now do peaches, which are three good things, exciting things, big, small, whatever. Um, just as, as long as they, they make you happy. So I'll do mine really quickly. My first peach is that I'm very glad that Brian's back. Uh, you were missed. Thank you. My second peach is that for some reason my sleep schedule is messed up and I've been waking up at 4.30 in the morning and I know that I can't, if I try to go back to sleep, I will lay there for three hours mm -hmm. wide awake. So now I just, I will get up at 4.30 and like run errands or watch the sun come up and it's kind of awesome. I hate that I am waking up that early and I just will go back to sleep a couple oh, of hours later. But, but it's the best also. It rules before the sun's up, nobody's out, and I'm just like chilling. It feels like bonus hours in the day. Hundred percent. The world is and your oyster at four or thirty yeah. a.m. There, there exactly. is no better feeling than walking into like a coffee shop two minutes after it opens. Oh yeah. And being... The moral superiority is really as somebody who was mostly a lifetime, lifelong noon sleeper. Uh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the waking up early thing. I'm into it. Great. Good for you. Uh, my last peach is I got a can of corned beef hash recently. Mm -hmm. I hadn't, uh, I, I don't know, like I love corned beef hash. That's probably my favorite breakfast food, but I had not had canned in like over a decade. And I've passed a couple of it's nights. Pretty I've fucking been doing great. eggs. It's so good. <laughs> it shouldn't be allowed for something to come out of a can to be that good. Just mm -hmm. frying it in a very thin layer and the best. I remember when we when I was in summer camp, uh, we, I went to a summer camp in the Adirondacks, and occasionally we would go, you know, on hiking trips or whatever. And the ultimate, the ultimate thing to get for lunch was a can of ham salad. And it was like, today's going to be a good day, guys. We got the ham salad. The ham and salad. Ham salad, which is exactly wow. what I think it is. Uh, it's ham and mayonnaise and spices in a can. And it's weird, but it was great. Like egg salad. Yeah. <laughs> canned eggs. Can you imagine canned egg salad? Ugh. Ooh. But yeah. Anyway. It's the tinned meats. It's it's you open the can of corned beef hash and you're like, wow, this is dog food. But then you fry it <laughs> and yep. you're in business. Yep. Um, yeah. Cool. So those are my peaches. Peaches. Either uh, of you. Deer. Got any peaches? Um, peaches? I'll just um, I've got some things on the horizon that I can't really talk about, but I'm just like my peaches are I love my cat. I love my boyfriend. I love what I do. You know, cool. I'm just like continuously surprised and excited and humbled by 
the things I'm able to do, like appearing on a podcast right now with y'all. I'm going to be um, showcasing the Capcom spotlight later today. Like, it's just like, I love what I do and I'm so, so, so grateful, like, to be able to do what I, I do, not just physically do what I do, but like be able to do it in drag because I feel like it speaks bigger volumes and it lets mm-hmm. me be artistic and creative while doing what I would be doing honestly if I wasn't in drag like I'd still be playing yeah. games I'd still be watching Capcom spotlight but like I get to do it on video in drag so it's always a blessing every single day is a blessing I love it I love that for you That's so great Brian what are your peaches yes okay uh peach number one is I just got back from a two-week trip to Sonic Ranch which is a recording studio just outside of El Paso Texas Cool. And uh, it's like, it's this incredible place. It's way the fuck out there. Uh, it's in the middle of a pecan farm. And it's an incredible studio. They actually have four different studios. Um, and I think it's the largest recording, res- like, recording complex in the world. Um, at least in terms of uh, number of studios, land area, all that stuff. And we got, we finished one album and we almost finished another. And uh, from a band's Ninja Sex Party and Starbomb. And we, oh, it, we cool. made a lot of progress, and it was just a really great time. Um, so that, that that's 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 a big one. That's um, fierce. I love. It, um, uh, what is it? The the dinosaur laser fight. Oh yeah! Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> it's fucking yeah. science. Well, that's I us. love that. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it's it's just it's so fun to be able to do that and to like go somewhere cool full of uh, it is just musicians everywhere from all over the world who are coming in uh and you get to meet cool people and the gear is amazing the uh, sounds are great and it's just fun and it is very much of its place like you're eating you know like tex-mex food all the time because you're right on, we're right on the border that and, is my favorite food that's oh, my heaven I love that it. is heaven so that every there's like there are people that work in the kitchen there. Every morning you get like a breakfast burrito with like a fresh tortilla. It's the oh. fucking best. So great. So you're uh, not only having Tex Mex, but you're also creating art with like the artists of the world. Like that is that's right. Absolute heaven. I I can't say any names, but there was a band there that it's like a big fucking band, like a big band. Madonna. And yeah. I was like, yes, that's right. She was there. <laughs> um, but it was like whoa. That's a, it's pretty, but everyone's having lunch together. It's it's so great, and everybody that's is just so cool. cordial and and kind. Um, so that's peach number one. Peach number two is while I was there, I stayed in the most haunted room <laughs> in Sonic Ranch, <laughs> the so-called blue room, and part because no one else would, <laughs> and I had someone had to in our party. That was the one that was left over. It was the one that was left over. Now every time I've been there. We've seen, we've heard the stories about the blue room and we've always kind of peeked our heads in, but it's like, no one's going to stay in there. Well, we had to this time and no one else wanted to. So I did it. And I'm proud to say that a, my peaches that I survived. Yay. And I detected zero supernatural activity (gasps) and I was looking for it. Kind of hoping I would see it. Kind of hoping I would see it. Nothing happened. Now there are stories about the ranch and ghosts i have to say all these stories happened a long time ago when people were drinking and doing a lot of drugs so i don't know if i fully believe you know it's like oh my god then i woke up and my shoes were in a different place it's like i think there might be a more quotidian yeah you moved them in your sleep lady when yeah when you were drunk so okay (laughs) peach two is i stayed in the blue room and survived now peach three I have to get out my phone for this. Uh, I came back and my uh, wife and daughter were very happy to see me. And my daughter, Audrey, who has been on this podcast, uh, wrote me a poem. So I'm going to read it. The best father in the world. A poem from Audrey Wecht. (laughs) The best father in the world. Yes, I must confess. But there's one thing that worries me. Does he have a chest? That's it. Hmm. And I was like, put it on the album. (laughs) I thought it was so great and funny. And then she, she left me a little gift. I don't know if you can see it. It's a 
heart with a tiny pizza inside of it. Oh, she missed you. Wow. Isn't that cute? That's really, like really that her, nice. That yeah. her nice poem about you is really like questioning your gains. Like, yeah. <laughs> you skipped chest day. <laughs> skipped yeah. leg day. And All I, of it. Yeah. But she's a she very... like she dedicated lots of love to you, but she also read you for filth. Oh, this, <laughs> constantly. I, I am getting. <laughs> she is so shady. I get roasted constantly by this child. <laughs> constantly. Uh, Layton's seen it happen in real time. Uh, I'm definitely fully in the dad's <laughs> phase of parenting, which I hope to be in for the rest of my life. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's it's just fun to be around someone that I am constantly embarrassing to. That's so. a that's, well, that's that's dad. That's why this show that's works dads. too. That's right. So. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Uh, dear, thank you so much for being here today. It was really great to to have you on and to talk to you, and we just appreciate your time and and you being here. Thank you. I had the time of my boobs. Thank you for having me. I um, of course. I'm. I'm just honored. Thank you. If yeah. people are listening and they want to watch your streams, if they want to check out what you're doing, where can they find you? My name is Dear Let's Play with Shapir. Um, if you like horror, if you like drag, well, hey. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Dear is my is my Twitch channel. If you like TikTok, at Dear Dear, D-E-A-R-D-E-E-R-E. And that's most platforms. That's my username if you want to find me out there. But um if you are queer or you like queer things, drop me a follow. I'd love to have you. I'll be live today, but this will be in the past for anyone listening. But um, come join me anytime. I stream five days a week unless I um, do another stuff. But five days a week on right. a normal week. Wow. Great. Amazing. All right, everybody at home. Thanks for joining us for this one. It was a treat. Uh, hugs and kisses. Happy man this doesn't work when i when i when i say this on friday but for next week happy out of out of touch wednesday no shit i fucked this up never mind i don't I'm even know what you're trying you. to do i'm with you i'm, I'm waiting for <laughs> tools of a- affirmation give me give yeah. me happy, beautiful happy quotes. we sh- happy we shop wednesday happy out of touch thursday happy flat fuck friday see you next week Bye. so true Layton, you really spilled. You did it. You really did it up. Wow. Bye, everybody. Bye. Layton Night is produced by Brian Wecht, Layton Gray, and Jarek Centeno. Follow us on Twitter at Layton Night, on Instagram at Layton underscore Night, at Patreon at patreon.com slash Layton Night, or email us at LaytonNight at gmail.com. 